night descends on Treasure Island and San Francisco Bay becomes the setting for a city of enchantment such as no mortals have seen before and probably will never see again. For this magic city is destined to be destroyed completely, its purpose being merely a transient one. It is a rare privilege, therefore, to preserve the memory of the Golden Gate Exposition of 1939 and 1940 through the medium of Technicolor photography, which faithfully reproduces our impressions of a night on Treasure Island. Statues, panels in relief, great murals and paintings are used to glorify the courts and basic buildings. Nearly all the outstanding Western artists and sculptors are represented, and their work, aside from its artistic value, interprets the pageant of the Pacific in a blaze of colorful grandeur. of Treasure Island, who is credited with these spectacular lighting effects, is A.F. Dickerson, director of illumination of the General Electric Company, an ultra-modern artist who paints with electricity and draws his color inspirations out of the ether of night. of these artistic lighting effects is the palace of fine and decorative arts in which the masterpieces of other artists now engage our attention. Out of the 35 foreign collections represented here, no individual painting reveals a more realistic portrayal of human features than this one, entitled The Guardians of the Children's Charity House, painted almost three centuries ago by Jean de Bray, one of the greatest of Dutch painters. Paulus Marils, another famous Dutch artist, born in the latter part of the 16th century, is represented here with this masterpiece, known as the Portrait of a Woman, painted about 340 years ago, and as vivid today as it was then. The Courtyard, also of the old Dutch school, was painted by Peter de Hooch in the latter part of the 17th century. Among the many masterpieces of the Italian painters is this one by Titian, painted in 1543 and listed as a portrait of Pope Paul III. Titian died at the age of 99 years, but his memory has been immortalized by the great works of art that he left for posterity. In amusing contrast to the ancient European masterpieces, we turn to the modern American school and observe a painting by James Chapin entitled Boy Practicing a Clarinet. Another famous American painter is Thomas Benton, who created this unique painting called Romance, the stereoscopic quality of which illustrates one of Benton's chief contributions to modern and typically American art. And here we behold another modernistic masterpiece entitled To the Stars and painted by Rockwell Kent, one of America's foremost artists. The 
old English school of art was well represented by a portrait of Arthur Atherley, painted by Thomas Lawrence in the early part of the 19th century. And from the old French school, we observe a self-portrait of the artist Marie Lebrun with her daughter, painted over 150 years ago. Madame Sophie of France was painted by Natier, a French painter who flourished in the days of Louis XVI. And now we come to what was regarded as the exposition's most precious masterpiece, the world-famous Madonna della Sedia, painted by Raphael Sanzio, the immortal Italian painter who lived from 1483 until 1520. Raphael died over four centuries ago at the age of 37 years, but his Madonna lives on in grandest tribute to his memory. As we turn our attention back to the ultra-modern art of Treasure Island, we are thrilled by the contrast and the thought that art in any of its forms, regardless of origin or time, is truly a joy forever. as night descends on Treasure Island, and so it will be until September 1940, when the lights that enchanted the millions of people who visited the Golden Gate Exposition will be turned off forever. Only the memory will remain, the memory of one of the world's greatest achievements in the art of lighting San Francisco's magic city on Treasure Island. <laughs>